Good evening and welcome to the Marlington Local School District Board of Education meeting of Thursday, March 21st, 2024. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you call the roll, please? Josh Hagan? Here. Karen Humphreys? Here. Kathy Krupko? Here. Mark Ryan? Here. Jonathan Swift? Reading of the mission statement, Mrs. Krupko. In collaboration with staff, community, parents, and students, the Marlington Local School District will develop lifelong learners who understand and apply knowledge and demonstrate excellence in pursuing the highest standards with effective intervention to challenge every student. Thank you. Additions or corrections to the agenda? Are there any? Option of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda for the March 21st meeting? So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Special presentations. <coughs> okay, good evening. Uh, this is probably the <coughs> favorite part of our board meetings. We're going to do our uh, special presentation tonight and honor our students. So we're going to bring Mr. Farrell up from the high school to begin our students of the month from the high school. Good evening. We have um, two students of the month that I have the privilege to introduce to you from the high school. Uh, it looks like one of them is not here. I'm going to go ahead and go through um, everything about her as well, though. So first is going to be Audrey Miller. Audrey is not with us tonight. Uh, but Audrey is the daughter of Ryan and Heidi Miller. She is secretary of the Marlington chapter of the National Honor Society treasurer of Spanish Honor Society, and an executive member of Character Counts Club. She's a four-year letter winner and captain of the varsity softball team, a member of the Duke Street Select Vocal Ensemble and Faith Family Church Youth Group. After graduation, Audrey is committed to continuing her academic and softball careers at the University of Toledo, pursuing a degree in early childhood education and Spanish. Audrey's teachers and coaches say that she epitomizes the essence of leadership both on and off the field. She has a natural ability to inspire and motivate her peers. She leads by example, displaying determination, integrity, and sportsmanship in every endeavor. <coughs> Beyond athletics, Audrey extends her leadership into the classroom and the school community. She is an exceptional role model for her peers. She has such a warm personality and puts a smile on the face of everyone she comes into contact with throughout the day. How about a round of applause for Audrey Miller? All right, our other Elks Teen of the Month is present with us here tonight. If I could call up Calvin Bungard. Could you come up, please? <clears throat> Calvin is the son of Curtis and Carrie Bungard. He's a member of the Marlington Chapter of National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Character Counts Club, SAD, Rotary Interact Club, Spanish Club, and is an Altman Ambassador. You can see he's a part of a lot of groups. Calvin was a 2023 Buckeye Boy State Delegate and is a member of the Academic Challenge Team. He is a member of the Boy Scouts of America and donates his time and blood regularly through the American Red Cross Blood Drives. In his free time, Calvin enjoys scuba diving, photography, biking, and traveling. Calvin's teachers say he is a shining example of selflessness and service as he generously volunteers his time to make a positive impact in the school. He can always be seen volunteering his time at various events. And beyond his volunteer work, Calvin embodies the values of integrity, compassion, and empathy, serving as a role model for all of his classmates. He has a positive attitude and is always looking to be a positive influence on everyone around him. He is a model student and very deserving of this honor. Congratulations, Calvin. <coughs> Kitty, can you get a picture? This morning. Kitty, 
Next up is middle school principal, Mr. Rizzoletti. Good evening. The middle school is pleased to announce that we also have two students of the month in March. And first up, Kylie Kreidler. <laughs> Kylie is the daughter of Ron and Christy Kreidler. She's an avid softball player and a talented student. She has a younger brother, Kevin, in fourth grade. This is what her teachers have to say about her. Kylie always works hard to keep good grades and is a very nice, pleasant young lady. A student of the month is one who embodies kindness, dedication, and determination. Kylie Kreidler fits this definition. Her kind-hearted nature is evident in every interaction as she consistently goes out of her way to help others without expecting anything in return. She genuinely cares about the well-being of her peers and community. She's always willing to lend a listening ear or offer support to those in need. Kylie has a passion for success, and she strives to make that success happen, whether on the softball field or in the classroom. Congratulations to Kylie Kreidler. And our next March Student of the Month, Spencer Deal. <laughs> Spencer is the son of Annie Deal and David Deal. He likes creating, especially on video games. This is what his teachers have to say about him. Spencer is a great student and is responsible and hardworking. He's set apart by the kindness that he shows others. He's always polite and willing to help anyone. Spencer demonstrates respect towards peers, teachers, and staff. He communicates respectfully and considerately, fostering a positive environment for learning and collaboration. Spencer's shown growth throughout the year. He offers support, guidance, and assistance whenever needed, demonstrating kindness and empathy towards others. Kind of my favorite part of what teachers wrote about him. Spencer tries his best on everything asked of him. He's very polite, kind, respectful, and caring. And teachers added, he always asks how my day's going or how I'm doing. That's just the extra step that Spencer takes throughout each and every day. We're very proud of Spencer Deal. Next up, Lexington Elementary and Mrs. Weber. Lexington Elementary is proud to honor Jimmy Favazzo, fifth grade Kiwanis Student of the Month. Jimmy was selected Student of the Month because he is a hard worker in class. He has a likable personality. Jimmy enjoys being with friends and making new friends. This student has stood out as a person of character with his respect for others and his willingness to help others find success. Jimmy meets challenges head on, giving it his all. And his teachers say, "Good up, keep up the good work. We are proud of you. A few things about Jimmy. His favorite subject is math. His favorite thing to do is play catch with his dad, and he likes going out to dinner. What's your favorite thing? 
loves Applebee's. When he grows up, he wants to be a professional baseball player. And his favorite activity when it comes to school is enjoying a good book. He loves to read. Congratulations, Jimmy. Next up, Mrs. Kitty Mort, Marlboro Elementary. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Marlboro Elementary's Kiwana Student of the Month for March, Cadence Wolf. A little bit about Cadence from her teachers. Cadence was selected for this honor because of her dedication to all of her classes. Cadence has an outstanding work ethic. She strives for excellence, completing her work on time and submits her best work. Cadence has another special quality for caring for people. She is attentive to her friends who are having a rough day and she's always available to them and will do her best to cheer them up. Cadence is a definite role model in our school building for her peers and for our younger students. She follows our Duke Pride expectations in every detail. Cadence, we appreciate your dedication to our school and your example of excellence in being a Duke. A little bit more about Cadence and her school day. Cadence loves school. One reason for this is because Mr. Greco brightens her day. She has definitely enjoyed having Mr. Greco as a teacher and this has been special for her, considering her dad also had Mr. Greco. Her favorite activity at school is writing. Her favorite part of writing is making up fictional stories based on real life situations. Right? Well, specifically, I recall her telling me her favorite story was about an amazing school principal who had a secret identity as Wonder Woman. Wait, fictional, non-fictional, I'm not sure, but okay, she's saying she doesn't recall that, but some special things about Cadence's family. Cadence loves her family very much, and they have a special place in her heart. Her amazing family includes mom, Amy, dad, Justin, Brian's stepdad, Becky's stepmom, and her sisters, Kaylin and Caroline, who also attend Marlboro. Last but not least is her brother, Colton, who will be joining us for kindergarten next year. Some fun things she enjoys doing with her family include traveling to Columbus, camping, going to water parks and other adventures, and she also looks, going, looks forward to going to Florida each summer to spend time with her cousins. Also in Cadence's free time, she loves to play volleyball. Her favorite volleyball skill is spiking. Cadence's other hobbies that keep her busy are dancing, drawing, and of course, writing. Cadence has several things planned for her future. Those include, but are probably not limited to, visiting Paris and seeing the Eiffel Tower, learning sign language, meeting famous people, becoming a traveling nurse, and learning to be a writing teacher or college professor so she continue to write lots of fictional stories. Congratulations, Cadence Wolf, Marlboro's Kwana Student of the Month for March. I have the pleasure of introducing our Washington student. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Ava Grove. This is Washington Student of the Month for March. Come on down here, Ava. <laughs> Ava Grove. Ava is a, is a leader in the fifth grade. She's a pleasure to have in class and she's a dependable, dependable student that always tries her best. Ava is an excellent student. 
In school, she loves to read, and she wants to be a veterinarian when she grows up. Outside of school, she enjoys playing soccer, basketball, and softball. She also enjoys outside activities with her fa family. Some other things about Ava. Her favorite subject in school is reading. Do you have a favorite book or a favorite author? Mystery books. Mystery books. Okay, great choice. A little bit about Ava's family. She lives with mom, dad, and her brother, and they have two dogs. Their name are Fiona and Weston, and they love to go on vacation together. In the future, Ava would like to be a veterinarian. She would like to visit Italy and France, and she also liked to watch a professional soccer game. Lionel Messi is her favorite player. Did I say that right? Okay. And she would love to meet him. And when she gets older, she wants to study at the University of Mount Union. Her favorite thing to do in her free time is to play soccer. She's a goalie on her team, and she also likes to draw and play board games. Once again, Ava Grove, Washington Elementary Quanta Student of the Month for March. I'd like to thank all our parents, families, and friends that came out for our Students of the Month this evening. At this time, before we start the formal part of the meeting, this would be your time unless you wish to stay for the formal part of the meeting. You can exit if you choose. Thank you. Do you want to introduce Mr. Oh, it's invocation. Sorry. Um, invocation, Pastor Ed Carter. We'll bow our heads. Holy Father, we gather here today and we seek your guidance and wisdom for the Marlington School District. We pray, Lord, for your guidance during this board meeting. Grant us the insight to make decisions that will positively impact the lives of our students, teachers, staff, and community. Grant us the compassion to listen with open hearts, to understand different perspectives, and to find common ground for all for the greater good. Bless us with patience as we navigate through challenges and uncertainties and help us to approach each decision with clarity, integrity, and the wisdom that only your spirit can give. May our actions reflect kindness, respect, and a commitment to excellence in education. Guide us in fostering an environment where every individual feels valued, supported, and empowered to thrive. In the name of Jesus, we humbly pray this. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, moving on here. So uh, I started this last year, um, and once a year I'd like to um, I'm gonna bring up here up to the podium Rick Baxter. He is the president of the Alliance Area Development 
Foundation, and he's also the current president of the Alliance Area Chamber of Commerce. And I was, I asked him to come basically to give an economic development update for the City of Alliance. City of Alliance and Marlington obviously are pretty exclusive when it comes to sharing. <coughs> so this gives the uh, board an, uh, an update on this year, uh, this year's progress. Uh, thank you, Dan, for this time to uh, to come and share uh, a lot of things happening in Alliance. Uh, First, I want to thank Dan for being a part of our board this year for the Alliance Area Chamber of Commerce. I so always appreciate to have a superintendent on the board to, uh, to just have perspective and, and add to, to our boardroom, so we appreciate that. Um, a lot of things happening. If you've been in Alliance for a while, uh, you've seen a lot of change. No longer do we have a Carnation Mall, uh, but we have a brand new Meyer uh, that will be opening up here in May, uh, which is very exciting for our town. Um, along with that, uh, we should be getting word about uh, four to other six retailers uh, that'll be coming up next to Meyer, um, at the next to Dunham's. Actually, um, we should be able to, to be able to announce some of those retailers coming. But uh, it's exciting to see the growth and, and a lot of people that um, companies that want to come to Alliance. Um, some other things happening: uh, Raisin Canes, which is a favorite of a lot of the, the college kids and the high school kids. Um, they're actually going to be opening up probably around May. I have a conference call with them tomorrow to schedule a ribbon cutting uh, for that. Uh, they put that up pretty quickly, so that's uh, another. A nice get for Alliance. Uh, we also have a healthy uh, place called Pulp Juice and, Juice and Smoothies uh, over at the Mount Union Gateway Plaza. Uh, there's also two other retailer, two other restaurants, one other, actually one that's looking at both sides uh, that we be, may be able to announce here soon. So we got a lot of food. We got a lot of food. We got to <laughs> keep exercising around here, right? Um, another one coming, uh, A1 Japan Steakhouse is coming in the old blue fig. Uh, unfortunately, there's not enough space where they're coming to be able to do the hibachi where they cook in front of you, but Maybe down the road as they grow, they may be able to expand and do that, but they will have uh, A1 Japan Steakhouse will be opening up there soon. Uh, we also have in our industrial parks, you've noticed the IML Containers uh, building at the corner of Main Street and, um, and Freshly. Very nice building. It's a company based out of France. Uh, they actually are renting space in Canton. They're coming over. Uh, they'll probably be creating next additional 30 jobs. They have 30 now, so it'll be up to 60, uh, and they're hoping to grow up to 100 here in the next couple of years. So. Uh, some good manufacturing jobs with uh, a lot of robotics, uh, a lot of things they do. Uh, they do uh, food packaging for the food manufacturing industry. So uh, very exciting to have them. Uh, we're also uh, talking to two other companies. There's a company out of Texas and also a company uh, that is local that's looking to expand in the industrial park. Uh, so we're continuing to, to have a lot of activity there, uh, which is exciting. Uh, we also are in the works of looking at the property that is to the west of Freshly. Uh, Main Street would kind of cut through, but there's about 80 acres that two uh, landowners own that we're looking to try to start to create a second industrial park. Um, we're having so much activity, we're, we're getting nervous. If, if we run out of land, where are we going to put new companies that want to come here? Uh, so we're working on that right now um, in the works, and that's, that's more exciting news to come, hopefully, with that. Um, if you notice, the new Mod Wash is finally built and open. Uh, we actually just did a ribbon cutting there today to, to welcome them officially into town. Um, interesting fact, they have 102 locations. Uh, the Alliance location is the fastest growing of all of those locations. They get up to 1,000 members uh, faster than any of the other mod washes. So that tells a lot about our town, uh, that we, we like clean cars, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what you say. But uh, it, it does uh, show that State Street is definitely growing. Just another statistic, uh, two years ago, State Street, the corner of Sauberg and State, was about 24,000 cars a day. Um, now it's over 30,000, and that hasn't, Meyer hasn't even opened yet. So uh, the, it's the second busiest street in Stark County. So a lot of activity that's coming to, to the Alliance area. Harbor Freight is another new uh, business that opened down in the College Plaza area. We also have a small little grocery store called Stark Fresh that opened up in the Alliance Commons, a new place that has a uh, consortium of all kinds of different businesses that are located in there and some nonprofits. Uh, but Stark Fresh is a nonprofit grocery store that meets the needs of our downtown uh, community, which is very exciting. Uh, we also uh, put together a contest that we've entered uh, with another company in town called Special Power Sources. They make fuel cell generators. And we're hoping to win up to a couple hundred thousand dollars that we can use a fuel cell generator to power all of their refrigeration units, which would put, put some sustainable energy uh, on the map for that area, which would be very, very exciting. So we're hopefully going to find out tomorrow. So cross your fingers. Hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get to the next level for that contest. Um, also coming up, I mentioned to Dan, in, on April 11th from 2 to 5, we're going to be having a, a career fair at Mount Union Fieldhouse, uh, really geared for uh, not only job seekers, but for uh, young kids that just want to learn about the opportunities in the Alliance area. 
Lots of manufacturers will be there just to answer questions, talk about uh, different careers, uh, especially really manufacturing. Manufacturing is a big need we're seeing coming down the road, so we're really trying to, to get kids excited about the future of manufacturing. Um, also, on the Chamber side, we also are partnering with another organization called Main Street Alliance. Uh, Main Street Alliance is helping to revitalize a lot of the things happening downtown, uh, which we have a lot of things happening. Uh, this year, this summer, we're going to have seven concerts that will be happening down in the downtown Caboose uh, concert series, um, which is very exciting. We're going to have uh, final Fridays. Every final Friday of the month, there's some kind of activity going on for kids, other things going on, uh, which is exciting. Also, a Sky High Fitness Training Center has opened up on the second floor of one of the downtown buildings. We have a coffee shop. We have two restaurants that are looking to open. Uh, so we're starting to get a lot of exciting things happening in the downtown area as well, uh, which is good. So uh, best way to keep up with what's going on, and like I said, things are changing uh, on a weekly basis, it seems like, uh, is to follow us on Facebook. We have the Alliance Ohio Chamber of Commerce on Facebook, Alliance Area Development on Facebook, and then our Main Street Alliance page. Uh, which usually keeps up with all the activities that we have happening. So uh, we're in, we're in uh, exciting times. So it's good to be in economic development. So appreciate the time, and uh, thank you to the board for all your guys' service. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks so much. <clears throat> thank you, Rick. <laughs> okay, okay uh, next we have uh, OSBA presentation or update. Uh, Ms. <coughs> Kathy Krupko. Okay, there's not a lot going on legislatively right now. Um, the Department of Education and Workforce is still organizing and setting up their parameters. Um, Mr. Ryan, Mrs. Humphreys, Mr. Swisher, um, Mr. Swift and I all attended the uh, Ohio School Board Association Northeast Region meeting last night where Mr. Ryan was honored. Um, and we had uh, a presentation from a, uh, an attorney that represents um, schools as well as the legal department from the OSBA. Um, the only other thing I have is um, in your OSBA emails, um, there's a notice that the, they're accepting applications for the student achievement fair. So as um, our student achievement liaison, Josh, you might want to look into whatever artwork or small choral groups or see what we have. I don't think we've ever presented down there. No. And it would be a very nice thing for our school to uh, showcase. And that's all I have. Okay. It's a short one. Thank you. And we're going to switch things up a little bit. On it. We have two more reports. Usually we have the curriculum update first and then mine. I'm going to start off before Miss Kaylee tonight because uh, I got a few highlights that we're going to talk about but she's going to go into details a little bit more about that kind of kind of flows better together here Oh, you're good. I appreciate it. So here we'll go ahead and uh, get started with our March uh, superintendent report. Uh, I continue to stick with, you know, kind of where we're at with the district for some few things to celebrate this month, kind of where we're at right now, some things moving forward. Uh, as Mrs. Krupko mentioned last night, we did, uh, the Ohio School Boards Association did recognize Mark Ryan for 15 years of service on the boards. So we had a chance to uh, have a nice dinner, presentations from some, uh, some kids, then obviously heard from, from some different uh, people from the school boards, and they recognized obviously 10 years, 15 years, 35 years. And uh, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a nice evening. So we appreciate Mark spending his time on the board. 15 years is a long time, so thank you. Uh, if you didn't get a chance, 
uh, the C, our high school play, Cinderella, you really missed out. Um, these are just a few of the picks. Um, we had so many talented students that actually there was, you know, Thursday, Saturday was a specific group of some different character changes. And then obviously Friday, Sunday was some different character changes. So we had some, you know, maybe two different Cinderella's, maybe different the uh, stepsisters and things like this. Uh, uh, we had our elementary kids as the mice. Um, it was uh, just a great show. Um, I can't say enough. It was uh, I really enjoyed it. I was there opening night. Um, and it just I, the, the department um, did a great job. And I think I don't want to thank one and I miss them all. So I'm just going to leave it at there at the uh, the entire department because I know that there's a lot that goes into that. So we appreciate it. Uh, I'm also bring up there's obviously we had some celebrity readers uh, Marlboro uh, had some celebrity readers and the, typically we had some board members there uh, myself there in the middle I, there was actually a chair for me but they jokingly put me on a <laughs> little box they thought that was more funny kids enjoyed it uh, so we get they, you know it, it gives a chance to see some of us to come out to the buildings and read to the kids so I just you know it's something we got to enjoy so I think I appreciate that. Okay, so we're talking about things to the now, where we're at. So I'm only going to briefly touch on this because Miss Kaylee is, you know, is taking the is really the lead with Mr. Miller on this, and I, I'm kind of coming in on this on the back side of it. So we have, as we mentioned, it's important for us to write grants. As we mentioned, we wrote many grants last year. We really targeted grants this year, you know, and, and uh, Renee and her team wrote the ini an initial grant for Marlington for culinary. And that would have been new about a year ago. Problem was I was new and it required everything, but a co there was a cost factor when it went into it. That cost factor was hiring a staff member and sustaining that staff member for time. It, you know, it was about a $3 million grant, you know, so we erred on the side of caution because we were looking at, that was the, my first summer of cutting 14 staff members. It's very hard to tell the board you're gonna cut 14 staff members or not replace them. But at the same time, you're gonna write a grant to, to add a, a, a teacher, which in, in hindsight, I, I, I was a, uh, I'm a, I'm a person that likes to take risk. You know, I, I wish we would have. So we actually um, shared that grant with Alliance. You, you know that Alliance obviously got that grant. It does benefit Marlington. But at the end of the day, that's, you know, it's, you know, we typically, I don't look back and say, hey, second guess myself. I second guess it because we wrote a $3 million grant for our cohort with Alliance. But at the same time, you know, it, I think it would have been very, beneficial here with our programs, not that it still won't. The second round of the grant was Ohio's Career Technical and Education Equipment Grant. So this grant was a little bit different. This grant was not to add anything new, but to enhance what you have currently or make it better. So currently we have an informational technology career tech program but the need is coding. We were switching to coding. You know, this is like a handbook issue, which we talked about when we talked about doing our handbooks and the changes within the handbook, as we talked about. We were moving into coding as it was. This gave us an opportunity to write a grant to get new, new equipment and actually physically make the environment that the kids are in better. So Renee, Mr. Miller, her team decided to do that and she's going to talk about that grant a little bit tonight but we did receive six hundred twenty two thousand dollars specifically earmarked for that grant that grant will come in but it is immediately used for what it is we're going to have about a year to spend it on two three things i guess in a bucket and you know which is one is going to be training two is going to be obviously the, the tech equipment itself that we'll need and three will actually be the physical makeup of the room so we'll go through that process. So that's the nice thing about it. And we already have the teacher, so we're not changing anything. Is there any certain amount earmarked for each one of those, or is that just total? There's like a general 
earmark, like for there might be like say 250 or 260 thousand for the classroom itself, or we have like a wall we'd like to remove, new ceiling tiles, electrical equipment based on what we have to bring in. Then it'll be maybe another 180 or 200 thousand for all new computers and equipment that they need for the coding portion of it, and then the the rest would be for PD and training. But, but that's what you figured. Yes. So I'm saying the the grant doesn't. Uh, earmark it and require no that's we, we actually write for that and then that pr pretty much we have to fall within those buckets to make this work okay you know so um, <clears throat> so I you know miss Kayla Renee is going to kind of handle the the PD the training then obviously we're going to have to go through the bidding process for equipment based on what the the specs were that we that were in, inherently inside the grant and then obviously the same we're gonna have to go through the bidding project for uh, any of the class the classroom construction itself which is just reutilizing our classroom here in the high school. We're not adding a new classroom, it's just making it better. So that is a reason to celebrate at the same time, that's where we're at now, so Ms. Kaylee's gonna be talking about that. Uh, we talked about, I'm gonna talk about uh, the community meetings I've attended, the strategic plan as I promised, summer projects is what we're gonna be re you know, reviewing some of that and uh, with, in our levy. So we're talking about our summer projects. Uh, we had a work session uh, a little over a week ago. Um, Josh and I met prior to that work session and kind of reviewed uh, what we talked about in that work session. It was very extensive. So there's a couple different options you can look at each summer. You can kind of come in. I could come in with a, a list of recommendations and then just continue to do it every year and that will still continue to happen. But for this particular year, I kind of, you know, wanted to take a good look at the district and what we could possibly accomplish if we had the right funds available. Okay, because obviously um, there was a levy in play at the same time, so I, I knew there was a potential to do more. Okay, with a levy failure, there's a, you know, you got then it's, there's a potential to do less, which is where we're at. So we had to take a look at everything. So what we are going to talk about, what we did talk about, um, that we look at an approving tonight, you know, that I'll be recommending the board to obviously cement work throughout the district, drainage work, lawn maintenance, door improvements, mulching, playground equipment, paving, lighting, and HVAC. Now, lighting and HVAC will not be on the agenda tonight. All right, because we, uh, the board kind of said to go back and get you know, one, I wanted to get, I got one quote, I wanted to get additional quotes on lighting. At that point in time, we're talking about the middle school and high school and a little bit at Lexington. So I'm going to get a few more quotes on that and come back. HVAC has to be bid. When we're talking about HVAC, we're looking at that. We're talking about giving air conditioning to the auditorium. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Everywhere else we have air conditioning and heating, but those the, the, the gym and the auditorium, the high school gym and auditorium are still uh, parts of the puzzle we have not targeted. Um, the quotes we got for the gym were higher, but we also have some window issues and things like that. So we, you know, it's kind of something that we need to take a step back at right now. So we are gonna look at bidding that. We're talking about paving. We have significant paving needs. We did significant paving needs last year. Um, so, you know, what we're kind of targeting this year from a paving standpoint would be uh, the parking lot next to the middle school. It's never been paved. Some people call it the soccer parking lot. That's an easy way to put it. The middle school uses it. We get a lot of traffic through there. Um, Marlboro side lot that would be the side lot where the other uh, softball or baseball field is uh, so if you're staring at the building it would be the right side has not been touched uh, Lexington or Washington side lot there's gravel if you look at the front of the building that's a gravel lot that was one that'll be on the on the docket um, high school speed bumps we're gonna put some speed bumps out there they want you know our, our, our kids and maybe some community members travel a little a little fast sometimes down through the uh, tennis courts and through there so the speed bumps might uh, slow them down just a little bit uh, and the high school we looked at three phases so we're gonna you know make a recommendation for phase one which would be the the, the bulk of where everybody is which is everything surrounding the main high school not the parking lot itself uh, 
So I, we kind of limited it to that. Um, so realistically, we kind of stopped there. Now, when I say there's other paving issues out there, there is. I mean, we have uh, Marvel's Front Circle, which I, it, you know, was, it was an option on there. We have a couple of playgrounds that really do need some attention when it comes to asphalt. We're kind of holding off on that. Right now, we have two other sections of the high school parking lot which really need to be addressed and then we'll be good. The middle school has some areas that are grass they're using for outdoor learning that they would like to see addressed or at least have some um, asphalt for that. And then obviously, we're gonna, you know, that's, those were all things we talked about. So, but we kind of took an idea of what we can and can't do right now based on the finances we have. So those are the, those when it comes to our summer projects that's kind of as a bulk of where we're at when i say cement work there's cement work all over the district we talked about that so it's just a very it's very broad because the projects are smaller in nature but they will you know add up so there's kind of all over so that's kind of the piece on that if you have any questions please let me know uh strategic plan so Oh, I probably messed that up. That's all right. As I said, our strategic plan is up this year. Uh, we've had, uh, I've been part of three strategic plans. A typical strategic plan is five years. I told you la uh, last month we're kind of working on a three-year cycle because inside the strategic plan should be the one plan. Your one plan now drives your funding. So it's like things, things that change down at the state affect your local districts. So we have met uh, every month. So we've met three times with um, Mike Galena. So he's kind of helping us guide through this. So this, I promised the board I'd give you a rough draft with the hopes to give you a final copy by June, okay, where we're at. So obviously inside the strategic plan, mind you, this is very rough. It would be our mission statement, our uh, vision and purpose statements, okay? So we do have our, vi our vision, then our purpose. <coughs> But really, we're talking about goal areas. That's what you got, you know, most people are concerned with. What's inside your strategic plan? What's a working process? So obviously, the one plan has to be in there. Inside the one plan, uh, it has facets underneath it. And that's what Renee is going to talk about tonight because she's, you know, with the DLT, with our administrators, this is something that she's been spearheading that is just a constant. It's something that is a steady constant for our district at all times. We have to be aware of it at all times. The other two main sections are obviously facilities and fiscal, because that's obviously things that you should have in your strategic plan, okay? Because the one plan targets everything else from communications to culture to climate. So when we're talking about, she's gonna, in, inside the one plan, this is what she's gonna talk about tonight. So I'm kind of just gonna gloss over that there's three sections in there, early warning, instruction, and safe and healthy schools but I'm going to hold over that. When we're talking about facilities, you know, we have different strategic plans in the past that basically says, what, what do you want to do with the district moving forward? So now we're talking from a five year to a three year. So, um, you know, unless, and this is input from the board as we go and we'll have, you know, but when I, when I talk about facilities in this strategic plan, we're specifically talking about priorities that need to be done within the district itself at this time. Okay, so I call it, we kind of come up with like a tier one, a tier two, and tier three. Talk about things that are, I don't want to say they have to be done, but they're, they're probably priorities of things that should be done or should be looked at from a board standpoint. You know, and again, this is a rough draft. When you're talking about elementary paving, middle school paving, when we did middle school, and we're still working on it. High school renovation, stage two, three, and four, we're doing stage two. You know, playground renovation, yes, we're targeting that now this summer. District bus purchase per year. We need to continue to do at least one per year, if not two. We have to continue to refresh our devices, and we really need to start looking at Lexington's abatement. I didn't even talk about that, but we were talking about that at the work session. We probably, once we start abating, we need to continue doing it in a cycle. But that's a $400,000 project. But that doesn't even include the drop ceiling. When you're talking about tier two, you're talking about, hey, you know what? It'd be really good. I, I've met with the fire chiefs. We're touring the buildings right now. 
You know, they would tell me it's a tier one. You know, I, I, it's, but it's a cost. You know, we do not have a fire alarm upgrade. You pull a fire alarm or a kid, you're, you're not getting, you're getting, it's like your cell phone ringing. It's not going directly to a fire station. Our main bus garage really needs upgraded. We have to deflate the tires to our buses to even get it into the garage. It'd be nice to raise our ceilings. I don't mean tear it down, just upgrade it. We can actually get buses in there to work underneath them. Outdoor lighting, we're working on air conditioning, the auditorium. High school window upgrades. In hindsight, I'm not sure we need to do that. That was there, still discussion. And Lexington's wastewater treatment plant at some point in time is going to need to be addressed. We're fine right now, but it's, a, it's something we need to keep in the back of our mind and think about. Tier three, it's, these are all priorities. These are things that are gonna have to be done. We can't ignore them. You know, it's easy. People say, oh, you can just let it go. It's fine. No, it's not. High school track replacement is costly. Our community uses the track all the time. Our kids use the track, all right? It's, it's just, it's due. We're going to be due in the next two to three years. Do you have any numbers? Estimate? Typical track overlay of what we're at is probably around three to 400,000. I'm going to say closer to three, probably around 300,000. Uh, high school stage curtains, I'm going to be making that recommendation soon. I mean, I really think they need it. Uh, we're looking at probably $30,000 for that, but... I want the 50-plus-year-old curtain. No, so that's just something. Lexington chimney renew removal, that's another... Uh, actually, that's on our list to actually happen this summer, but I'm still getting some quotes. Um, so I'm hoping maybe we can get that down. To me, that's a safety hazard. The drop ceiling install if we, uh, at Lexington, if we do the abatement, um, every one of our students athletically and non-athletically use our weight room. If you have not been in our weight room, our weight room hasn't been touched in over 12 years. It's just, you know, and for somebody that just, if you enjoy exercising, you should promote exercising and mental health, our weight room needs to be upgraded. And I, I don't want to call it a weight room. I should call it a something better than that, but that's just what I call it. Was our weight room ever open to the public? I don't know. It should be. Oh, I wouldn't now because I don't feel it's safe and or. Well, I know with, with COVID it wasn't. No, it's a, it's like a major, it's like a bigger plan for me if we could actually have our mall center open more often for walkers and things like that during the day yeah. versus just saying at night or this, the weight room had, you know, repaint, new weights, things on there, treadmills, things that were better where you could actually allow it in. Yes, that would be great. I, I, I love that idea. It's on there. Uh, our high school wastewater treatment plant needs some work. Uh, Washington has some lentils that uh, need to be looked at. Uh, building brick renovations, middle school gym four replacement. I think we call these tier three because they're, they're going to be okay. But it, when you're talking about the long-term feasibility of our district, the long-term use of our buildings, all these things cost money. And we don't. I don't have quotes for any of these. I'm just telling you these are things, concerns that have been discussed when we meet monthly of things, the possibilities of things we need to look at and have discussions about. Uh, on the fiscal side, you know, when we we're talking about it, there's three buckets there. You're talking about financial. We talked about staffing and HR and grants. Financial, really, I mean, it, Bob will tell you, you know, one of his goals is to have cash on hand for 60 days. <clears throat> Obviously, our five-year forecast, trying to, you know, as, as a, in layman's terms, live within your means, keep that balanced. You know, everything is driven through a five-year forecast. And basically, do have a better job of doing levy understanding and timelines in the long run in the next three years. And you, that can come from renewal or new money. From a staffing and HR, we need to have a better structure within ourselves for uh, responsibilities when it comes to organizational structures. We, may, we need to make sure we have timely and accurate budgets, and we need to communicate our programs and be centered around transparency. You know, we don't, we, and that's something we have to talk about. These are goals that we want to build in there. And then obviously grants. You know, we want to continue to target grants. Now again, rough draft. We have a lot more to go, but this, this is a little bit different than what you've seen in previous strategic plans that were 30 pages. We want to really specifically target, you know, needs that, that we feel is relevant today. Okay, so that's the, that's that part of it. All right. 
so next steps, obviously, we're going to continue moving forward as, as uh, we'll, we'll, go into the, we'll go into the process to get that out there as a draft, probably on the website. We'll probably share it in Parents Square with some of our parents. If we get any feedback, that's great. That's what we want. If, you know, we're just, but that's kind of the next step. Once, but we got to kind of fine-tune those goals and have a reason for those goals, and that's probably where we're at next month in our group. Uh, th these dates I shared with you, this was all, you know, these are, are through. I'm through these dates. So the, you know, when it comes to community meetings, these are all things that I've attended on top of, you know, uh, Chamber of Commerce meetings, YMCA meetings, Rotary meetings, Alliance Area Development Foundation meetings. Uh, some of my turnouts were small. Some of them were larger. Uh, they were all good. Uh, I, I'm going to continue to do them. Um, I think it was good. You know, I'm going to keep coming out. I'm not, you know, I, I always say, you know, a lot of times it's interesting. I go to these meetings and people leave and they say, I wish more community members would come. That's probably the most common thing I hear. You know, and I, I said, well, a year ago they were a lot busier. But, you know, I, 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 you don't have to like what I have to say, but, you know, people love drama. So if there's drama, they'll show up. So, and there's no drama crowd dies down. So that's just the way so it is. So you were doing like two or three a week right before the levy. How often are you going to plan on doing meetings now? So it's the same as I did last year. So I did two sets last year. I've done two sets already. I'll still hit the townships again in the spring for the year, but that'll be it. Then I'll restart back up in the fall. You know, it just, it varies on my schedule too. But no, there was strategic. Obviously, I didn't want anybody to say I didn't talk about it, you know, when it came to questions and there actually wasn't too many levy questions as much as there was you know general what's going on in the districts and then those led into levy questions and really the bulk of the levy questions came from uh, obviously the group that didn't support it you know we had to clear up some misconceptions there uh, moving forward let me make sure I didn't miss anything back there that I was talking about Summer projects, community meetings, that. Oh, if I can go over to moving forward before I wrap up here. Uh, before I get into moving forward, you know, I wrote on there about the levy. Obviously, we're, you know, I, I think I was quoted in the newspaper when they called me uh, at the thing, you know, the question was, do you know why the levy was defeated? And I said, no. Uh, the question was, are you putting it back on November? I said, no plan on that. I mean, I, it's, it's hard to, you know, how do you make those kind of comments two hours or 45 minutes after you get the thing? They love to try to pin you in that position to say those things. You know, I, I made it clear, as I've said to everybody else, the levy was never a threat. You know, it was, it was a need that we need right now because we have so many needs with these five buildings, which I think is important for the community and kids. And it just, obviously, I didn't drive that home enough. And obviously, I can't control the, the, the small facet of people out there that firmly believe we don't need money for buildings. And, I, and that's something I have to work with or work on because I can demonstrate a need, and I don't like to assume, and as you will see in our five-year forecast, there won't be assumptions in there. There's going to be facts. I mean, I sat in a meeting today at the county that basically said that you know, we're meeting with the auditor April 9th, but at the end of the day, you know, we know that the reappraisals are coming. That was a question about, are we going to inherently get more money as your guys' property values go up? That, that would be an assumption, yes, if, if that happens. And it's not a, you don't want to call it an assumption because it hasn't happened because people haven't got their taxes yet, their, their values. But Alan Harold's going to tell you, if you ask him, it's going to go up. At the same time, he's going to tell you that the legislators are going to change it, and we're not going to get anything. And we're trying to talk about that on the night. You know, um, you know, they just, they don't. It was 1972 when they passed the House Bill 930. They took, they chose a 20 mil floor, and they're going to change it again now. So it's, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword. So that's why I said taking into assumptions what's going to happen is not going to be good. So it's, there's, that's just one facet of things that are, are coming, you know, and, and it's, it's just a lot of talk down there. And if you're really in tune in Columbus and what's going on, 
following what's going on, the legislator is going to make a lot of changes. Um, so I'm looking forward to having that conversation with Alan. I hope it doesn't happen. But the feeling is, based on his take on where the, the auditors are going, that there's going to be significant change on that. And that's could change from anywhere from dropping the floor to lower the different numbers. So Marlington would be an example, as many others were, would get no money. Or phasing in a three-year average or different things. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be good for public schools. And they make that very clear. Um, so I'll have more to come next month. I'm going to try to get into that. So we are meeting with them personally and kind of going into that. Are there, are there any bills that are actually being voted on yet in regards to that? No, there's 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 a lot of hold up in the legislative side. They talked about a little bit last night uh, uh, from the legislative liaison that obviously the, there's a there's a speaker of the house is kind of in limbo right now. Um, because Mr. Huffman's, you know, obviously wants that role. Um, and so that's kind of keeping kind of things in hold. At the same time, the, the, the legislators and the auditors at, uh, just probably with back in October uh, got a lot of pushback from public schools, superintendents, legislators, all before this vote here in March. Be very careful because they were already in the process of changing the floor or something else, making some decision. Because obviously the you know the, the southern tier of Ohio already got their property taxes and they noticed you know skyrocketing and they just you know that's the, you got to be voted in I mean you gotta so I think there's just as a group when we when I sit with superintendents these are discussions where we got to get back involved in when it, when you're talking about boards and that if you don't know what's going on down in Columbus it, and how it affects you directly I mean we're small potatoes but at the same time. If they change the floor or make an adjustment, which is what they're saying they're going to do, um, it affects us as it affects many, many other districts. So it's just an example of when we're talking about. So I, as I follow back up with the levy, I, I, I'm not so, I guess I'm, if I had to say where I am as a superintendent, I'm disappointed in the turnout, but I think the turnout in general from voters wasn't strong. You know, so I just think if there's anything that we need to do a better job of, or myself, is to try to get people just to vote, really. I, I don't care which way you vote, but I think it's important that everybody has a right to vote. So I think that's where I'm at. Uh, moving forward, uh, next month we're going to talk about, we just kind of give you a, a safety update. I think it's important to let you guys know, as I said, safety is everything. And it's very important for us. Uh, I told you I'd try to get Samsung to come in. I, I still plan on that. Um, I do speak with them often, so I, I think uh, that's a hot topic over there in Washington Township. Uh, so we're going to have a little discussion about that because there's also some assumptions there. So we're going to pin down some facts for you. And uh, obviously a five-year forecast is coming. So we need to uh, kind of get that discussion that because that's, that's going to be a lot of driving of where we're going to go within the next year. Um, so we got a lot going on next year. That's kind of where I'm at. It's a busy time, so we're gonna we got coming up the spring breaks. So we're gonna kind of get through that, and I appreciate uh, what the board's been doing. And uh, you got any questions for me right now? Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. As I said, leading into me, and this is we'll bring up Miss Kaylee. Our she can uh, kind of give her report that will flow into what uh, a little bit of what we talked about tonight. I don't think I need to even do it. I think you did mine for me, Mr. Swisher. Thank I, you. I apologize. No, you that's good. It'll keep cut that part down a little bit. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here tonight to talk to you a little bit about the Career Tech grant that Mr. Swisher had mentioned. Um, give you an update on our dyslexia training, as well as talk to you about that 24-27 one plan that he mentioned as part of our strategic plan. Um, feel free to stop me at any point and ask questions, okay? Um, so we were awarded the $622,580 to transition our current IT pathway into that software development pathway. Um, I'm really big, anytime that we do something, I always like to make sure that we establish the why behind it. It wasn't just we went rogue and said, hey, this will be a great program for us. We did do research to see that it actually 
um, is on Ohio's top jobs list, and it's actually the fourth, fast, fourth fastest growing job in the state of Ohio. Also, according to the Ohio Bureau of Labor Market Information, it projects a statewide growth rate in the software development field of 15%, with an average of 5,239 projected yearly job openings. And then more specifically, if we're talking just about the Canton-Akron area, um, if you're looking at the Northeast Ohio region, it has a projected growth of rate of 18.8% in the software development occupation by 2030. Um, so those were some of those key components on the why behind transitioning that IT pathway into the, the software development and coding. Um, and also, just to, to put this out there as well, you know, these, um, by the time they're done, our kids are done with our program, they're going to be able to enter the workforce making anywhere between 80 to $100,000 right out of high school. Those are also highly remote jobs or hybrid jobs as well um, because of the nature of the work. So they could be working from home, working from other places for companies that are across the globe and across the nation. Um, a little program overview is it is going to be an industry aligned software development pathway model. It's going to provide our students with prof professional coding skills, specifically in Python, which is the number one coding language across the globe. So um, there are also three others that are pretty popular as well and they'll dip their toes into those, but they will come out with Python certifications as well as um, a Python portfolio. They will also be able to receive industry recognized credentials and also work-based learning experiences that are going to be necessary to compete successfully for those jobs after graduation. So part of this grant is going to allow them to be a part of internships and that work-based learning program. Um, the pathway will actually begin um, with our, some coding exploration classes in grades seven through 10. So this isn't just an 11th and 12th grade career tech program. We are actually going to be beginning some of those classes in seventh and eighth grade, and then as electives in ninth and 10th grade utilizing current staff members. So we're not hiring anybody else for this work. Um, I can tell you um, Mr. Cernansky and Mr. Eshelman at the middle school will be providing these courses and um, Mr. Kendall at the high school who's our current IT teacher. Um, so I'm excited about that because it's not only going to be 11th and 12th but it's expanding out as well. Through this we've also been able to align some partnerships, TechSmart, they're our software development pathway design and professional learning partner. So these are the folks that we're getting the curriculum from. These are the folks that are going to be providing the specific detailed professional development to our teachers so that they are equipped to teach these coding courses. We also are going um, partnered with InterAlliance, which is they are going to be providing us with internships and there are WBL means work-based, we have so many acronyms in education, but that means work-based learning partner. So they will be providing our students with um, work opportunities, Standex, and also Forward Edge. So those are some of our um, partners for the grant. I have a question real quick. Yeah. Is this something we could look at expanding for people that already graduated to take courses like maybe night classes at the school? That has not even been a conversation, to be honest with you. We're kind of doing one step at a time. Okay. Yeah. The, I will tell you, Josh, though, but what is going to happen is we currently have um, juniors that are in the IT pathway, yeah. they are going to finish out their program in 12th grade. So what will happen is Mr. Kendall will be kind of doing, it'll be a little bit of a wonky year next year, he'll be doing dual, dual, dual programs. So he'll finish out those kids in the IT program 12th grade while welcoming in those 11th graders in the new program. But there have, honestly, there have not been conversations in regards to that. Okay, I just think there might be a demand for it. That would also though cost money. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, exactly. Hey, I, I wasn't saying free night classes. Yeah. <laughs> Renee. Yeah. Um, it, like you said, it starts with um, middle school. Mm -hmm. Is there testing for the students to see if they're interested, or is it just kind of like they just kind of try it? So there, the way that the program is designed is to just gauge interest. It's like it spark their interest. So it would be a nine-week course. It's not something that's an all-year or even a semester. It's a nine-week course for them to kind of jump in, to get their toes wet, see if they like it. And the, the nice thing is that it is differentiated so that, because what we don't want is it to be so easy that kids aren't interested in it, but that it be so difficult that they're like, oh, way too hard, I don't want, I don't want to do this, yeah. right? So it'd be really important, and that's why that PD that's coming in, um, our folks, part of the grant is for our folks to get paid to get trained over the summer as well. So that's all embedded within the grant. Nice. Um, so they'll be able to 
learn all of that so that they can then differentiate for our students as they're taking those. Same thing with ninth and 10th grade as well. We want them to get a taste of it, enjoy it, get excited for it so that they may potentially want to go into that 11th and 12th grade career tech program. And, Good question. And I don't know if you know this, are there other, I mean, around us, how many schools do this? There is one. Just one. Canton City also got the grant. We are a part now of what's called Ohio Codes Initiative in the state of Ohio. Okay. Um, we are one of a very small group of folks that are starting that initiative here in Excellent. the state. Okay. So um, Canton City also got received the grant. And just a little bit of a breakdown, Josh, I know you had asked about this earlier. Um, this is a rough estimate of what that's going to look like in regards to how we're spending that 622000 um, It is a federal the state received federal monies to be able to do this. So it's very, um, thank you. Yes, I was trying to think of the word. Yes, we are, we are accountable for every dollar that we are allocated. So um, you can see right here, we have about 300,000 for the curriculum, for the teacher training, for the teachers, um, for them to get reimbursed for the training, and then all of the computer equipment. We're going to have top-notch computer equipment in the lab, two big screens for each, computer for our students, that's the way that you need to be able to do coding, high-tech projection screens, all of those things, as well as a new um, MacBook Pro cart at the middle school, and all the bells and whistles that go with that as well. So it's fully funded through the grant. And then um, you'll see that PD, that is for us to pay for all of the PD hours to the company to be able to provide those um, to, our, to our teachers. And that last piece there is the Marlington High School facilities. Where Mr. Kendall's room is now, we are going to be knocking down that wall, um, opening up that space so it's more of a classroom and lab combined instead of being two separate entities. That will allow just for a better collaboration amongst the students and when they're working in small groups to um, do the coding projects. And that's extremely stringent because it's a federally grant, so we, you know, this will be my part of the contribution and when we will have to actually have a, even if we're just talking about a classroom, we actually have to have a design firm actually design it, then they have to send it to the Ohio Facilities Commission because that's where the grant's still tied through. And then obviously we have to get approval from there and then come back and then there's multiple other hoops before we can actually then bid it out and then open those bids and then make it, you know, suggestions from there. So you're, we're only talking about a classroom. So it's going to be, yeah. it's very extensive. It's not as yeah. easy as saying, hey, can I just have a few local bidders come out and do this. It's a, it's a completely new ball game here mm -hmm. when it comes to federally tied money. Yes. So we're looking at the program starting before the facility is actually going to be ready? Yes. We're, sure. Yes. Okay. We will be starting in the fall no matter what. Okay. We just might not have a ribbon cutting until after that once the, the actual facilities have been updated. Um, but I would like to also, you know, thank Mr. Miller for his part in this. And then Mr. Farrell and Mr. Rizzoletti have been great with being on board and and helping to sell the program. And I will tell you, Mr. Miller has already met with the students. So 11th, um, excuse me, 10th graders have already expressed interest in their career tech programming. And we had 11 students from Alliance that are interested in coming over. When Mr. Miller met with them, because they originally thought it was going to be the IP pathway, they were super stoked that it's going to be coding. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with every kid he met from Marlington as well. And our goal is to fill it with 25 nice. students. So. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for what the potential it can bring to our district. Um, so just a quick update on that dyslexia law. I've presented on this for the past couple of years. We um, remember our teachers have to be trained in dyslexia. We've been following along with the statutes from the law. We've had our K-1 teachers trained this year. Our second and third grade teachers have gone through training all, as well as the intervention specialists with those grade levels. The um, title teachers, everyone has been trained. Next year, it will be our fourth through 12th grade intervention specialist. So we're right on in line with what the state is asking us to do. Um, once again, that's just a lot of, it's very time intensive. There are 18 modules, I think, 18 modules for the dyslexia, 12? Oh, I'm thinking science of reading, 12, 18 hours. And so our elementary principals have done a, nice, a very nice job at facilitating those lear that learning environment and those modules for our teachers. Um, all right, now the fun part. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about Ed Steps. I know I've presented on this before, but just remember that in 2021, um, all LEAs have to complete what's called a Ed Steps process. This includes a one needs assessment. 
as well as a one plan every three years. This is tied to our federal funding. In order for us to get our Title I dollars, our IDEA B money, our Title IIA for, um, we have to have this plan in place and every single piece of our plan has to be tied to a funding source. So that's why this is such an important process and why this piece is so um, an important piece of the puzzle for us. Um, if you look up here, it'll tell you just, you know, we started with the one needs assessment. Every teacher in the district had an opportunity to answer the questions on that one needs assessment. We did it collaboratively as building level teams. Um, those questions, just so that everyone knows, they were triggered by our district data. So our district data would trigger specific questions that are required, and then we also had some questions that were recommended. We answered all of the required and recommended questions. We also did a root cause analysis, so looking at those items and determining the why, why are our scores this way, or why, is, um, why were we triggered in this area. We then um, created our priority needs from that, and then we use those priority needs to then build our one plan. And each, so we have three goals on our one plan. Each goal is going to have a student and an adult implementation measure, so how are we measuring the goal, and then they're going to have action steps. And like I said, each one of these are going to be how we tie our funding to our district. So um, I have been very busy just putting these together. It is, um, it's not difficult, it's just tedious. It's, it's a lot of small steps in order to implement this into the system. But what I wanted to do this evening is give you a preview of what is um, what we've created as a district leadership team, as a building leadership team and as a learning community. So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. So as you notice, we have our vision and our mission statement at the top. We have three goal areas. The goal area one is the early warning systems. So our SMART goal here is that by June of 2027, notice that's the end of our plan, right? So by June of the last year of our plan, we wanna make sure that the students, 100% of students at Marlington will be, pre be prepared to be enrolled in postgraduate education, enlisted in the military, or gainfully employed as evidenced by our state report card graduation rate, okay? That's important, that's not a high school initiative, that is a K-12 initiative. Everything we're doing from kindergarten on up matters and to determine whether our kids are on track or not. So you will see those, the student measure, how we are going to measure that based upon student data, how are we measuring it based upon adult data, and then we have strategies listed underneath each. So the first ones that, I'm not going to go through each of them, okay, because we would probably be here for the next four hours, but you'll see there's that strategy one, it's college and career readiness, and then it breaks it down into action steps for the, the, the three years of the plan. What are we doing specifically in regards to that action step? You will see strategies two, three, and four are the same for each of our three goal areas. These are required by the federal government. We are saying that community and family engagement is important, so you'll see community and family engagement in all three of our goal areas. You will also see leadership, administration, and government governance. This is shared leadership, the DLT model, the BLT model. You will see that in each of the three goals with the accompanying action steps. And then strategy four is the professional capital or LEAP, that's professional development, right? So in each of our three goal areas, we're going to be required to have professional development. Our second goal area is in instruction. So our SMART goal is by June of 2027, 100% of, of students at Marlington will meet or exceed their expected growth projections and ELA and mathematics as evidenced by our local and our state assessment data. So this, this encompasses all students, right? Even our highest achieving students, we wanna make sure that they are meeting or exceeding their growth target. Our strategy one is curriculum instruction and assessment. We are going to be working hard over the next three years to continue to align these things. And then, I hate to keep scrolling, but you'll see strategies two, three, and four are the same, as you saw up above. <clears throat> and then our final goal area is what we are calling safe and healthy schools. Um, you might hear it called PBIS, but we're saying by June of 2027, 100% of students at Marlington will have their non-academic needs met, 
through a tiered positive behavioral intervention and support system as evidenced by our PBIS data. So we want to make sure we are we're focusing on chronic absenteeism. We're focusing on students that, that have had prior behavior problems. You know, what are we doing to um, help in that situation? And we're looking, we want to make sure that our kids are feeling safe and supported and engaged when they come to school. And then once again, we have our strategies one through four. Um, so what our job is now, let me go back into here. So um, we also have, because each of our buildings is a Title I building, all five of our buildings also have to have building level plans. I will tell you, they are mirroring our district plan, so there's alignment. Um, they may just be worded a little bit differently in regards to the, the high school is going to be worded a little differently than what our elementaries would be, right? Same with our middle school. So I put the example of the high school plan on here. I'm, I'm not going to go through it. It literally looks identical with, about, with maybe some word changes. And then so the future steps, um, this will go as long as I get the board's blessing. This will go live tomorrow on our district website. Part of the requirements is we have to allow for public comment on the draft. So I will put this on the website tomorrow um, with a Google form that kind of explains the process and gives a couple of questions with um, extended response options for people to comment prior to it being submitted and finalized. How, how long do they have to make I'm going to have, have it up for a week. That's typical of what um, the expectation is for a week. Bring it back down and then um, make any necessary changes and then we will submit it, uh, well then Dan and or Mr. Swisher and Mr. Foss will have to approve it in the system. And then it goes into, goes to the ODE department. So each of the agencies will have a rubric and they kind of, <coughs> they grade our, our one plan. Um, and then if it gets kicked back, we may have to make some changes, but we don't know until they've gone through it with that rubric. Any questions about that? It's a pretty intensive process. Um, I'm thankful it only happens once every three years. Um, I, I don't know if I could do it every year. Mm -hmm. But um, the nice thing is, is the team's on board. They've done a fabulous job with, you know, including stakeholders and really honing in on the, the root causes of, of why our data is the way it is in certain situations and in a positive way also. You know, what are we doing well? And um, we're reaping the benefits of that as well. So that's all I have for you this evening. That was well, let, me, let me be clear that Ms. Kaylee's selling herself short and her team of administrators. When she says everything is tied to a funding source, it's very new to districts, including ours. You know, the Department of Education and Workforce and its cabinets that it's broken into is basically digging in, saying, I want to know what's going on. If I'm going to give you money, then you need to tie it to data. You know, it's in, and so this is a, a, a change everything from uh, our attendance data to why we need to stay where we're at and try to get kids to come to school to uh, you know the behaviors that our kids do within the building and how we're respecting and treating that and not dealing with it to uh, how we communicate uh, and and then obviously are our kids growing academically and in your and so all those things play a role one way or another into you know, when we say we're a 50-50 district, we're saying 50% of our money comes from the federal government, 50% comes from the taxpayers, you know, and then there's little side pots here and there, but generally that's that's where it's at in a nutshell. So it's, she's, we can't reiterate that enough. And part of that plan is presenting to the board. You know, that's that's a requirement. It's not an, that's not like something she just like, yay, let me go present to the board. This is a, you know, these are things that, you know, if you guys got questions, please ask because it's, uh, our administrative team's done a good job, and we have a good core group of teachers that have spent years on a team, really monthly, spending two, three hours really getting into this, and it's it's taken time, you know. So it's a, it's a it's a mindset change, even for myself, um, that's been in, you know been here for a long time. So we I really appreciate what she's done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the team's we done do. great. I mean, we meet monthly um, from eight to ten forty-five is our scheduled time. We have a very um, tight schedule and we cover a lot of things during that time. So um, it wouldn't be possible though without the team, right? We have, everyone's taking leadership and ownership of their goal groups and making sure that the work is being seen through. So um, it, it's definitely a team effort. Thank you so much. Thank you.
public participation. Did anyone sign up? Ms. No. Okay. <coughs> okay. Old business. Uh, I put this under old business because I feel like I keep bringing this back to you, but uh, I, there is a motion. Here. I, I do have to recommend the motion to approve the following changes as outlined on page 3 and 15 in Exhibit A. Uh, I don't have the program I didn't put in there because it's too long. So at, at the end of the day, this is a the table of contents on page 3 was updated to accurately reflect all information that was affected due to adding the pathways. And on page 15, the 15 hour and 30 hour and 60 hour, which are associates in the science degree for college credit plus courses and program of studies was added. The reason why I threw this in here, or was asked to put this on, we had to, uh, this came from uh, the auditor. That's really what it did. It's basically just putting college credit plus actively inside of our program, um, our Marlington uh, handbook program of studies for the high school. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. <coughs> okay, on the new business, uh, recommend the motion to approve the acceptance of the following exchange student for the 2024-25 school year as presented in Exhibit B. I am not going to Say try it. to pronounce that. <laughs> Come on. The, the student is from Spain. Lucia Rodriguez San Juan Benito. Oh, good. That sounds perfect. It's pretty good. Training in that. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. No. I'll second it. Uh, discussion? Call the roll. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Okay, this is this the first. This is the, uh, this is just for we're not going to act on this. So I uh, actually has to, it takes two times to act on it. So we'll actually go into old business, but it's so really I don't think we recommend a motion to approve. So that's that would be wrong, but uh, twice a year we obviously meet with Ed Holland from Neola. Um, uh, last Thursday, March 14th, he came in and met with uh, Mr. Swift, our uh, policy representative, myself, and Mr. Foss. We just reviewed the legal policies that uh, Ed suggested that needed changing. Um, we also looked at uh, Mr. Foss had some changes in some policies that dealt with um, employment and travel. Obviously, ours were uh, 20 years old. So we actually just had to update those to basically meet the federal IRS guidelines for travel. Uh, so this uh, inside your pamphlet would be just a general uh, kind of like, uh, yeah, like a brief about each one, but this gives you about a month to review those, obviously, so we can um, approve those next meeting. Wouldn't that be the first reading, though? So yeah, this first would be the reading. first reading. So we recommend the motion for approval of the following for the first reading of the resolutions from volume 42, number two, as listed. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Okay, two more. Uh, Next is a recommended motion to approve the following resolution for uh, Vasco Asphalt Company for paving services shown in Exhibit C. Motion. So moved. All second. Okay, discussion. This is just the paving projects that were discussed. Uh, inside that, as you can see in there, it's not too... Uh, improvements in the amount for about three hundred ten thousand two hundred forty eight dollars total. Okay, see that, yeah. We don't see this that. One right here. Oh yeah yeah. I just found it. <laughs> it obviously. <laughs> and obviously the only other thing in there is obviously we have right. this. It gives the uh, the board authorizes uh, the superintendent and or the treasurer to do any change orders as normal. At the end, if there happens to be any change orders through the project, and the, so. Generally, there isn't too often with Vasco. So. Okay. 
Okay, any questions? Are we considering paring any of this down? No, I actually pared down from what you're what we originally talked talking about. This is we went it went from it got us down about three hundred ten thousand in paving okay. this year. Why is the amount for the change order changed from eighty nine thousand to one hundred and forty? Uh, we changed it from $89,752 was a suggestion to 140 due to the, the Vasco said there's a, they may, when they get to the soccer lot, um, we talked about having a walk, the walk path, a walk path directly through there into our current walk path around there. And if that would be a small change order, we don't want to bring it back to the board. So you'll bring it back to the board either way? Either way we can, but that's the only reason we put it in there. You'll yeah, know about it. I was going to say the change orders, the authorization for change orders, almost 50% of the amount. Either way, the board will be aware we're not doing it. All change orders go through you guys. Which walk path are you talking about? We, it's not there. There's a walk path that the from community where, where uses though? from the soccer lot over to the middle school. There's like a. The hort. Yeah. Basically. Well. Hi there. Oh, I'm sorry. You mentioned getting a price too. Yeah, and I don't have a price for, at all for, for it that. either. So, <coughs> yeah. So, just, just add some room once we get a price to know if that can be added. If it can be, then I'll bring it back to the board in the in next month's meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, call the roll, please. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Finally, uh, recommend the motion to approve the following resolution for summer projects as shown in Exhibit D. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is approving uh, the authorization of the other projects that were discussed in the work session and or tonight in mine, which is the uh, concrete work, uh, the drainage work, lawn maintenance services, the handicapped door, mulching services, and just the playground equipment. There's not... Uh, Obviously, as I said, lighting and um, HVAC are not going to be brought up tonight until we get more bids and go from there. Yeah. So, between what we're voting, what we voted on for the paving and these summer projects, that's going to be a little over 450000 That So, that's from that 1.3 of overall amount? Yes, sir. Okay. So based on Josh, your nice conversation, which the only reason I have, as I put in the, my board update, um, so guess what I'm talking about? If, you, if in my board update, Josh put together a spreadsheet basically that kind of listed the current projects we talked about in the work session mm -hmm. and a cost, and then obviously it automatically adds up a value at the end. And then if we choose to do it, it'll give us a value. What we choose, you kind of highlight it whatever, and then obviously we could push it out the next year. The only thing I want to add to this before I share it with the board completely is last year's, because we obviously we had that, this, you know, 2023 project list. So I'd like to get a list of 23 costs, 24 costs, yeah. 25 costs, so forth out, so we have a running record from a board of what we do. Mm -hmm. be good. Uh, so, but currently, if, if we get <coughs> to lighting and, and approve it and get to uh, air conditioning in the auditorium and tear down the chimney at Lexington to its uh, to the roof to the roof okay. um, you're probably looking at about 832,000 total so we still paired that way back from where we were at you know I think originally we had we had, we had some totals a little higher than that with yeah. what we wanted to do yep. um, and I don't I wouldn't go any higher than that right now anyway that's that's Oops. just we need to we need to be cautious right now for projects. Okay. But I'll get that once I get that to last year's on that spreadsheet, then I can share that out and you guys will have that. Thank you. Okay, call the roll please. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? <clears throat> yes. Ms. Krupko? Yes. <clears throat> Treasurer's agenda. Okay. I'd like to recommend that the Board of Ed approve the minutes of the following meetings. February 15th, 
regular meeting and the March 12th work session. So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Krepko? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Okay. Financial reports. I'd like to recommend that the Board of Education approve the financial reports for the period ending February 29th, 2024, as shown in exhibits F through H. So moved. Second. Discussion. So I want to entertain any questions you have about the check register, uh, but first let me touch a couple highlights here. We ended February with uh, a balance, a cash balance of $8,653,272.51 in the general fund. Um, in the uh, permanent improvement fund, we had a balance of $1,169,008.82. And in the capital projects fund, we have a balance of $889,456.19. And uh, a couple resolutions from now, there's uh, the transfer for the pipeline that we can discuss at that time that will increase the amount in that 070 capital projects fund. Um, the cash reconciliation was completed for the month uh, and a balance of all funds Cash balance is eleven million two hundred sixty-seven thousand five hundred fourteen dollars and seventy-two cents. Okay, are there any questions? In I think Dan's presentation, he talked about fiscal fiscal aspect and having a cash balance sixty days out. Yeah, is that where are we? We're above that right now. It's more um, a goal of maintaining that right so certain times of year we get low on cash especially in the january february time frame that i know at times we've been challenged. over 90 at times what it would we averaging about 90. you know i don't know what our average is because i haven't been keeping track of it um <coughs> lately um but 60 days is about 4.4 .4 million dollars for us okay and uh with our current cash balance um, in the general fund, which is what it would relate to, because we're, we're talking about uh, the day's cash that would appear on our forecast. Um, the fund balance is 8.7 million. So we are above that. It's, um, you know, it's almost arbitrary what you set for that. 60 days is kind of the minimum that the Department of Ed um, as established as a recommendation so that's why that number exists uh, but it can be it can be more um, and when you think about it that's not too two two months worth of cash isn't a lot um, that makes planning difficult if you get below that especially okay Hold the roll, please. Oh, I've got oh. some questions oh, on some okay. of the checks. Um, Bob, um, if you could, what, what is this SC Strategic Solutions LLC? Uh, strategic Solutions, they uh, provide software really to, to my office in particular. Um, the programs that they provide um, is a program uh, that keeps visual images of and financial data related to our purchasing. So, um, like for example, if the auditors come in or if they don't, uh, if we want to look up information related to a purchase that we've made, purchase orders, um, we can see that, it stores all that. It also has um, a process that's used for the approval. It, it'll send a, for approval, like if Steve Miller puts one in for athletics or requisition, it, it might go to the high school principal and then to myself for approval and it, it routes it depend to the right people for approval along the way and it provides a means for people to even sign off if they've uh, received the good so that we know it's okay to pay okay how, how long have we been using that software well i can say it was before december 22 um, but i'm not sure how long before that we are also trying to use it more 
like this, what we we signed on part of part of the cost here is we signed on to to use it for timekeeping. So we're going to implement that this summer with the goal of having it fully in place. Okay, so they've got the multiple fall. packages, interiors. They they add things. They have other options available like that. Okay, because that's seventeen thousand six hundred. Is that um, is that a yearly cost? You know. Yes. Okay. It's also part of what we were under. Uh, uh, <coughs> We had no system for paper and pencil. The county said that really in the arts you can't do that. So the, the, the county gets different <coughs> options, you know, on that. Uh, you know, we were under like another the computer system we had, I think, was redesigned or an older, older antiquated system. And so uh, Dr. Main was kind of looking into options. So it kind of spearheaded and started there with Dr. Main. That's where it started with the cheated solutions. So we kind of had that was the whole rollover in the office where we were trying to get things kind of put together. So we're just kind of getting to a comfortability factor, I would say, okay. maybe slightly. And now we're looking at what our options it have. So you know, another example, you know, for approval, uh, we have an LPDC. So basically, all our teachers have to <coughs> take X amount of hours, either college or professional development, to get their license renewed every five years. Myself. So it keeps track of all that. Well, we have an antiquated system called HR kiosks. Well, it's no one can get into it but strategic solutions it's part of their tier so we can actually do it and transfer it over so it's there's other options just like parent square had more options inside of it to be able to let go of other options so we're trying to streamline yeah as much as we can to get to where that is if that makes sense Efficiency. Uh, yeah, if it's in one system well like it's he said being paperless is our goal i mean we still have so much you know one paper. of the big burdens or one of the things that really slows down our office is for Payroll purposes, especially, is the paper timesheets. You know, it's a huge stack. A lot of employees have multiple ones. Um, to try to expedite that and make that more efficient, that's one of the reasons to go to that. And it's it'll be a challenge to go electronic for this fall, but that's we've committed to, to giving that a go. Okay. Um, the next one was uh, education alternatives. I don't know if I've asked that one before, but I... The EA provides a special education services. Special ed. So I think I did ask that before. And... I think we've only got one or two students there, but the, uh, the cost for those services is, can be pretty high. Yeah. Ruling, ruling our experiences. What is that one? Ruling our experiences. Rock. That's is that rocks? Rock rock. Is that what that is? With, yes. Okay. Let's see. Let's see here. A Comdoc Incorporated. What was that one? It's all our printers. Printers? All our, or not printers, our copy machines in all the district. Yes. All five buildings plus offices. And the Quadient Finance USA. Which is about five lines under Comdoc. Oh it's on um, the third page. That I had to look that one up too. Um, it's changed from what it used to be. That's for our postage. Um, that's who we buy our postage through for our automatic mailing machine. And the energy and business marketing was for the gas, right? Okay. Yes. Put our notes on this. All right, that'll do it. That's all I wondered about. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Okay. Call the roll, please. Oh, you want to say something? Hey, else? just uh, if I wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind me bringing attention just to one thing too. We have, um, I think on the one of the things that I'll just mention as an example of the kind of things we run into. Alliance Water Conditioning. We have a, a check on here, check number one four zero nine eighty, sixteen thousand five hundred twenty, to replace a water softener at Washington Elementary. And so I just bring that up just because we're in public session, just to remind people that we have a lot of these expenses that come up with the older buildings. Those aren't the projects. Those aren't the big things that come through, but whether it be replacing a, a freezer that's, that goes down or an ice machine or whatever, 
or an oven, like I heard we have another one that's quite questionable right now. Um, these things come up and we have needs, they add up. Where was that water conditioning? Where was that softener at? Which building? Washington. Washington. Didn't we just do one a month or two they back? Have, they have three. Huh? Yeah, I think Ooh. I mentioned that one in a previous meeting. This is actually just the payment. Okay, for the like, yeah, like, I don't okay. think so. Okay, yeah. so that's the same one. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Can you call the roll, please? Mr. Hagen? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Swift? Oops, he's not here. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Have it. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the revenue and appropriation revisions. I'd like to make, recommend a motion to approve them. So moved. Second. Discussion. I have various adjustments on here this time, but um, one in particular um, stands out is the $652,580 into um, fund 499 for that new coding grant. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of work too, <laughs> but um, that's the biggest change here. Get a motion on that? Yeah, we have a motion and second on that. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, call the roll, please. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Hagen? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Okay, the next item. Transfer to the Capital Projects Fund. Next is pipeline proceeds. I'd like a recommend a motion to approve the transfer of $1,372,752.03 from the General Fund to the Capital Projects Fund for the proceeds of the Nexus Pipeline. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I would just add that this is a whole year's worth. I think the uh, prior year um, it was done like one in the fall, one in the spring. This is just the whole year. Whole oh, year. This is to pay the loan. No, uh, that's no. the Nexus funds. The, the funds we get from Nexus. That's the resolution. I'm asking the treasurer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I bet. It will, but this is this is just the authorization to move the money to the fund. Okay. Where it can be used. But it covers. So this will also cover. It the covers project. the loan pick. Yes. Our loan project. payments as well as the projects, capital improvement projects we're talking. It does. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right. Call the roll, please. Mr. Uh, Ryan. I've got a question yes. on this. Uh, sorry. Right. Now, this is the money we were talking about changing this transfer if that, if the levy had passed. Is that what was in question, Dan? Keeping you know, this in the general no one, fund? I think only in all my meetings, I don't think I said it to the board that I was ever, it was for sure I was going to do that. I said what the point was is this is operational money. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody tells me, or the board, if you say live within your means, technically it's operational money. I can live within my means, meaning I can continue to operate this district. It's been 22 years since we've had no operating money. Yeah. What we lack is, you know, improving our district when it comes to our buildings, which is why I thought it would be appropriate to ask. Does this work for that? Sure. But if there comes a time, and I'll openly say it, where we can't operate within our means despite the cuts that I've made or, or you know, through attrition or whatever, and I feel it's appropriate to make a recommendation and obviously the board, then I would absolutely look at, you know, making sure we keep a balanced budget. Okay. So. I was, my intent was never to say, hey, if the levy passed, and I said this, that we're going to take $1.3 million and dump it back into operation. No, Because okay. the more we save in bulk for the district, the better. And I made that clear in my meetings. But at the end of the day, we still have to live within our means. And just like anything else, the assumption is we hit the 20 mil floor and it doesn't change. That would be operational money. If the assumption is 
the power site committee approves of this solar farm, would we get money? Yes, in 2028, that would be operational money. You know, so it's, there's different theories and what it is and, and assumptions, but no, yes, in general, there is, you could do that, but it was not one as a hard set, I'm gonna do it, but at the same time, okay. I feel that operations should be left alone if you want us to stay where we're at. So for the time being, this is gonna continue the Absolutely. transfer? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Mark, did you have something you were saying? No, I was uh, starting to vote. I was starting to vote. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Sorry. All the roll, please. Okay. Mr. Ryan. Yes. Mr. Hagan. Yes. Ms. Humphreys. Yes. Ms. Krupko. Yes. I'd like to recommend the motion to approve the resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor as presented. So moved. Second. Okay. Okay, essentially this is um, just a requirement by law that we have. The county auditor estimates how much each levy will bring in and we have to, uh, the board has to prove that and thus authorize the collection of that money. This is routine. Behalf. Yes. This is year. routine every year. Okay. Okay. You can call the roll, please. Mr. Ryan. Yes. Ms. Krupko. Yes. Mr. Hagan. Yes. Ms. Humphreys. Yes. Personnel. All right, personnel, I'm going to, this, this is just wonky. All right, so I'm going to actually do these individually. Uh, I would consent in general, but we have administrative contract we do in March, so I want to do that at the vote. Uh, we could consent to three, five, and six, or no. Number three, I cannot make a recommendation. That's supplemental hires, which is just your, your uh, coaches, but uh, I cannot because my daughter is actually on there for a, as an assistant track coach, so I can't make any recommendation there. Be it's clear. not that many. Fine. Just go ahead. So. I'm just going to go down the board individually. First one, recommend the motion to approve the following administrative contract. Renee Cayley, Curriculum and Staff Development Director. So moved. Second. 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 <laughs> we all are. Second. <laughs> it's Mark. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Any discussion? Comments? Um, is that one of the changes to Renee's contract? No, it's it, all, all administrators are under standard. You guys have an administrative so for everybody. Contract. So it's, it'll go for three years, 8124 to 8127. Then she follows the steps and the protocols on that and then inside that. So. Okay. She has an outstanding job. Would be yeah. stupid not to. Oh, I'm not questioning her contract. I just. Yeah. No, they're, everybody outside the treasurer superintendent all have the same. <clears throat> that hasn't been touched uh, since Jim Nicodemo's been here. Okay, call the roll, please. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Number two, classified rec uh, resignation. Recommend the motion to approve the following classified resignation as shown in Exhibit L. So moved. Second. We have two there. Okay. Those are just resignations. Call the roll, please. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Okay. Item three, supplemental hires. I'd like to recommend the motion to hire the following supplemental positions, and they're listed there. Motion. So, so moved. moved. Second. Kathy. And Josh. Okay. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Number four, recommend the motion to approve the following classified subs. There are two. So moved. All second. Any discussion? Call the roll. 
Ms. Krupko? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Number five, recommend the motion to approve the following leave requests as shown in Exhibit N. So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Final one, recommend the motion to hire the following preferred sub for the remainder of this school year. So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Krupko? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Uh, upcoming events, um, obviously please continue to visit our website uh, for like athletics and team sports. We're getting into the spring season at this point, as amazing as that is. Uh, obviously March 22nd, which is tomorrow, will be the end of the third nine weeks. We have our spring break next week uh, through Monday. So please I hope our students, staff, families enjoy a little bit of time off. April 2nd is our National Honor Society's inductions that evening. I'll send a reminder out, so if you uh, can make that, it would be great. And we still have one more banquet to go yet. Uh, April 4th, uh, we have a wrestling banquet. And then, obviously, April 8th, uh, the kids uh, and staff don't have school. We have a uh, solar eclipse that day if you want to watch. That was already scheduled off, though, right? It was already off. <laughs> yes, that was already off. But everyone else is also. Correct. The entire county is off. Okay, the next Board of <coughs> Education meeting is April 18th at 6 p.m. here in the High School of DLZ. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Krepko? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. Ms. Humphreys? Yes. Thank you.